It's no surprise that Donald Trump secured the Republican nomination last night. Do you think all of the legal attacks on Trump will motivate, based on that story, conservative Christians to get out to the polls? I hope so. I hope it motivates all Republicans, frankly, and a few independents and maybe Democrats, because a lot of people who normally would not get involved in politics have looked at what the left has done to Donald Trump and said, if they can do that to him, they can do it to anybody, utilizing lawfare and essentially hijacking our legal system in order to accomplish a political gain. Nobody wants that in the United States of America. That's not a component of our republic, and hopefully it motivates people to turn out and vote. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at that study. I, I bet they didn't. Consider Kufi has 10 million members, Christians United for Israel. Correct. All right, the House of Representatives passed a bill to make it illegal to distribute or host TikTok in the United States unless Chinese owner ByteDance divests its interest in the popular app. It's the first time a congressional bill has passed that would outlaw an internet app. Representative Thomas Massey expressed concerns before the vote was taken. Here he is. But there's some of us who feel that either intentionally or unintentionally, this legislation to ban TikTok is actually a Trojan horse. Some of us are concerned that there are First Amendment implications here. Americans have the right to view information. So could this lead to government stripping away First Amendment rights? It's possible. I have mixed feelings on this because the TikTok issue needs to be addressed. I've called it the trans fat of the tech world. We know it's bad, but no one wants to really do anything about it because it's so wildly popular. But when you have legislation that is written so broadly, Thomas Massey brings up really good points. What sort of precedent does this set to give the executive branch more power over dictating which apps can be in the United States? I saw one commentator say we're basically passing the Chinese surveillance tool over to the United States government surveillance tool. What's the trade off? here? Is it even worth it? Is it actually giving up or retaining our liberty, liberties, or is it just passing the ball back and forth? So I think that there's mixed feelings on this legislation. I think if I were a member of Congress, I'd have to vote against it for a lot of the issues that Thomas Massey raised. Vote for something that instead singularly addresses the concerns that we have with TikTok without giving large, broad precedent to allow the executive branch to basically enact this same legislation against other apps in the future. All right. About an hour and a half ago, the House of Representatives passed passed legislation that could ban the popular Chinese-controlled video app TikTok, as you heard earlier, from the United States. By a 352 to 65 vote, the bill passed with enough of a majority to suspend the rules and move it through as amended. The Media Research Center CEO Brent Bozell gave no room for misunderstanding on the TikTok ban. Divest from the communist, chi communist Chinese government or do not do business with the U.S. We've been consistent from the start that TikTok is a company controlled by the communist Chinese government. As such, it ought not to enjoy any First Amendment rights in the United States. If it is passed by the Senate, the bill would reportedly give the president the authority to block the social media platform from doing business in the U.S., and Biden told reporters he would sign the bill if it makes it to his desk. Mike? All right, I wanted to get to this one with you in, in particular. This morning, Fulton County Judge Scott McAfee quashed a total of six counts contained in the election interference indictment against Donald Trump and several of his co-defendants. Give us your reaction to that decision, Luke. So it was six of the 13 counts, and it basically completely gutted the RICO argument here, or trying to go after Donald Trump. They threw out the part where they basically said that he was committing a crime by said, get me the votes and things of that nature. And it was for lack of evidence. And every single development in the Fannie Willis case or the Fannie Willis case over the last few weeks has been bad for her. We found out that she was basically elevating somebody in her office that she was having a relationship with and gave him undue promotion and benefits and things of that nature. And then we saw that there basically wasn't any standing for six of the 13 counts today. The whole case is, is no longer like a case of law and order. It's like the Keystone Cops. Every single development just shows that this was a political bias and there was no standing under our fair judicial system for this to continue any further. Okay, real quickly here. Haiti continues to fall apart. Criminal gangs take over the island. Representative Matt Gates asked the Armed Services Committee if they're prepared for a big wave of illegal legal Haitian immigrants. Here it is. I think you're right uh, that the, the driving conditions in Haiti could very well press more people. So uh, we've recently approved some uh, additional assistance that we can provide to uh, the Coast Guard. Under 30 seconds here, does it give you confidence? The administration's they're ready for this? They've got it handled? 
No, they don't. And the fact is that we've set a precedent at our southern border for just allowing anyone and everyone to come across. So if I'm sitting over in Haiti and I think to myself, my country is just falling apart, where am I going to go? The Biden administration has said, come on over. The southern border is wide open. All right, Luke Ball, thank you so much. Back to you in just a moment. Mike? Greg, all eyes were on Washington yesterday as former special prosecutor Robert Hur testified before the House Judiciary Committee regarding his report on President Joe Biden's mishandling of classified documents. Here is a one on one back and forth between her and Democrat Congresswoman from Washington State, Pramila Jayapal. I need to um, go back and, and make sure that I take take note of a word that you used, uh, exoneration. That Mr. is not a word Her, that I'm going to continue report, with that's my not questions. Part of my task as I'm going to continue with my questions. I know that, that, I that received, the term I ultimately reached. I know that whether the term sufficient evidence existed such that the likely you outcome you, you exonerated would be a conviction. Him. I know that I the term willful him. retention report, has a Mr. Hurd's my time. As you just heard, Jayapal insisted on saying that her report exonerated Joe Biden while Robert Hur made it clear it does not.